This video is sponsored by Squarespace. 2023. It promises to be a historic year for Disney, as it marks the 100th anniversary of the Walt Disney Company. And so what can we expect from Disney as it crosses this monumental milestone? Well, we'll dive into all of that up next. Hi there, Waltoneers. I'm Jack, and this is DSY Newscast. And before we get started, I just wanted to quickly mention that this guide is going to be all about the Disney parks and movie releases in 2023, as quite frankly, there was so much to cover in terms of Disney Plus that I decided to make it its own video, which I'll leave a link to down below in the description box. But now let's start where all years begin, and that's obviously in January, or to be more specific, January the 27th, as this is going to be a big day for for the Disney calendar, as it's the official kickoff to the Disney 100 global celebration that is touted as 100 years of wonder. And this year-long event is set to touch every facet and division of the Walt Disney Company, from movies to parks and beyond. Disney's illustrious history will be on full display as the company celebrates this monumental milestone. And to get things started on the 27th, Disneyland will be decked out with new platinum decorations, along with a Sleeping Beauty Castle overlay as well. And as day turns to night, there will be a new nighttime spectacular called Wondrous journeys that will envelop Disneyland Park with projection mapping on Rivers of America, It's a Small World, Sleeping Beauty Castle, and Main Street USA, paying tribute to every animated movie in Disney history. Then over at Disney California Venture, there will be the debut of the all-new World of Color 1, which is said to celebrate the storytelling legacy started by Walt Disney a century ago. But also in honor of the Disney 100 kickoff, there will be a brand new attraction at Disneyland, with Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway set to open. And although the narrative and the scene progression is the same as the version found at Walt Disney World, this version will be slightly different at Disneyland, as guests will be invited to step inside the Al Capitoon Theater, tour the Toontown Hysterical Society exhibits of Mickey's cartoon history, before then climbing aboard Goofy's locomotive for a wonderfully wacky, extremely zany and out of control adventure alongside Mickey, Minnie and the rest of the gang. But then, also in January, over at Walt Disney World, Monday the 23rd of January will mark the first day of Splash Mountain's closure as it begins its transformation into Tiana's Bayou Adventure. Which also means, unfortunately, Sunday the 22nd of January will be the last zippity doodah day that fans will have the chance to travel to their laughing place alongside Brer Bear, Brer Fox and Brer Rabbit before taking the five-story tall iconic plunge down Chickapin Hill. And despite it not being officially stated when Disneyland Splash Mountain is set to close at the time of this recording, considering that both versions of Tiana's Bayou Adventure are scheduled to open in late 2024, I would expect that the closure of Disneyland Splash Mountain will be roughly around the end of January as well. Then, as we move into February, this promises to be a big month for Marvel fans, as Phase 5 of the Marvel Cinematic Universe will commence, with the arrival of Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania in theatres on February the 17th. And in this third instalment of the Ant-Man franchise, Scott Lang, Hope and Janet Van Dyne and Hank Pym find themselves unexpectedly exploring the enormity and abnormality of the quantum realm as a result of Cassie Lang's quantum satellite signal being answered, which will surely lead to the first meeting between Lang versus Kang in the MCU. Then next up on March 8th, Despite Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway having already been open for six weeks at this point, the rest of Mickey's Toontown at Disneyland is scheduled to reopen once again, with this being the biggest reimagining of the land in its 30-year history. And this will bring back classic staples like Roger Rabbit's Cartoon Spin and the Fab Five Houses, along with the addition of the all-new Centennial Park. Now at this point, also in March, we'll see the end of the 50th anniversary celebrations of Walt Disney World on the 31st of March. And considering that Disney Enchantment was only advertised as a limited edition show for the 50th, come April 1st, supposedly you'd think that we're gonna see the return of Happily Ever After. 
However, when it was announced at D23 Expo, it was carefully stated that the popular anthem Happily Ever After will play again when an updated Nighttime Spectacular returns. So expect this to be an amalgamation of the very best of Enchantment and Happily Ever After into a new show in celebration of Disney 100, with this to fully utilize the upgraded projection mapping down Main Street USA and integrate some of the newer movies post-2017 like Frozen 2, Coco and Encanto, alongside the most popular and iconic segments from Enchantment and happily ever after. Then, as we move into spring of 2023, six long years after it was first announced at D23 Expo in 2017, Tron Light Cycle Run will finally open at Walt Disney World. And although the construction has taken its sweet time, it's sure to be a welcomed addition by Disney World fans as this will bring a brand new roller coaster experience that has only been able to be experienced on the other side of the world up until now, in Shanghai Disneyland. And so not only will this offer guests the opportunity to climb aboard a light cycle and enter the grid on what will be the fastest roller coaster at Walt Disney World, but the opening of Tron will also give a much needed injection of vitality for Tomorrowland as a whole with a radiant and colourful canopy illuminating the night sky as yet another new icon of the Magic Kingdom. And in terms of a defined opening date, despite it not being officially confirmed at the time of this recording, all signs are pointing toward a late February, early March for a soft opening, allowing for cast member previews, followed on by Club 33, Disney Vacation Club and annual pass holder previews before then having its grand opening in late March, early April 2023. And also in spring, we finally see the opening of the first ever Toy Story table service restaurant with the Roundup Rodeo Barbecue in Toy Story Land. And this restaurant's theming has a kaleidoscope of gigantic game pieces from various board games and play sets. And there is even the rumored possibility that this may have also been designed to feature Toy Story character dining as well. Then as we move into May, the summer blockbuster season will get into full swing for Disney beginning with the arrival of the final installment in this Guardians of the Galaxy trilogy, with Volume 3 hitting theatres on May 5th. And this movie will pick up directly after the events of the holiday special, with Peter Quill still upset after losing Gamora, and the Guardians protecting Nowhere, which has become a safe haven for alien misfits like themselves. However, it's their unresolved history with the Sovereign from Volume 2 which comes back into play, as the Sovereign have created Adam Warlock to hunt down the Guardians of the Galaxy. And much like the other two volumes where the story delved into the difficult paternal relationships between Gamora and Thanos in Volume 1 and Peter Quill and Ego in Volume 2, this time around, it's Rocket's origins that will be explored with his hatred toward the High Evolutionary who created him through his torturous experiments. Then, later in May, just before Memorial Day weekend, we'll be invited to dive under the sea once again when the much-anticipated live-action remake of The Little Mermaid swims into theatres on May 26th. And despite this retelling of the Hans Christian Andersen fairy tale having the unique cinematic magic from musical director Rob Marshall, who previously directed Mary Poppins Returns, this live-action remake will obviously also be heavily inspired by the 1989 Disney animated classic. As alongside the inclusion of the iconic songs from the animated movie, it will also feature some new songs written by the original composer Alan Menken and Lin-Manuel Miranda as well. However, moving into June, Disney's stacked slate of theatrical releases continues with the release of Pixar's Elemental and Indiana Jones 5. As on June 16th, we receive Elemental, which focuses on a love story between a fiery young woman called Ember and a go-of-the-flow guy called Wade, who prove that opposites not only attract, but also react as they can't touch one another and so they are forced to step out of their element to discover who they are. Then on June 30th, 14 years after the previous instalment, we'll hear that epic John Williams score reverberate in cinemas around the world once again, as Harrison Ford returns to the silver screen as the legendary archaeologist one last time in Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. However, in this movie, Indy finds himself increasingly out of place in the late 1960s, and it's against the backdrop of a space race 
that Indy must dust off his iconic fedora and whip to then adventure alongside his goddaughter Helena to ensure a powerful ancient artifact doesn't fall into the hands of a former foe that has infiltrated NASA's moon landing program. However, Disney's summer of blockbusters continues a month later, as on July 28th, The Marvels is released into theatres. And following on from the events of the Disney Plus series WandaVision and Miss Marvel, Carol Danvers, Kamala Khan and Monica Rambeau become stuck swapping places with each other every time they use their powers, which forces Captain Marvel, Ms. Marvel and Photon to team up to figure out what, or who, is causing this to happen. And then on August 11th, we'll be dragging our bodies to the dead center of the movie theater, as a new version of The Haunted Mansion will be released. And this movie that is inspired by the classic Disney attraction of the same name is not tied to the previous movie starring Eddie Murphy in 2003, as instead this will follow a single mother and her son who purchase a New Orleans estate at auction, only to discover it isn't quite as empty as they had expected, which leads them to hire a tour guide, a psychic, a priest and a historian to help exorcise their newly bought mansion after discovering that ghosts are present, practicing their terror with ghoulish delight. And whilst we're speaking of the Haunted Mansion, at some point during 2023, we'll also see the Hatbox Ghost animatronic finally materialize within Walt Disney World's version of the Haunted Mansion attraction, much like it did at Disneyland in 2015. Then at this point in the guide, we're solidly within the second half of 2023. And the reason why this matters is because it's been stated that the first ever Frozen themed land, titled The World of Frozen, will open in the second half of 2023 at Hong Kong Disneyland. And it's here, for the first time in forever, that guests will be able to open up the gates to the Kingdom of Arendelle and walk around this picturesque land right out of the Frozen movies. And from what we've seen so far, it's been excellently themed with an amazing attention to detail throughout that will accompany the opening of an all new version of the Frozen Ever After attraction and the brand new Wandering Oaken Sliding Sleighs attraction as well. However, that's not all for the Disney parks. As you see, as we move into late 2023, there's going to be quite a lot happening over Epcot as first of all, we've had it confirmed that Harmonious will be replaced with an all new nighttime spectacular later on in 2023 that will be part of the Disney 100 celebration. But considering that the 50th anniversary of Walt Disney World ends on March 31st, it's expected that Harmonious may be initially replaced with Epcot Forever returning as an interim show, so that then preparations can be made for the new permanent show later on in the year. And this new nighttime spectacular will supposedly see the removal of the gigantic ugly barges from World Showcase Lagoon at long last, as it's been rumoured that this will be in favour of drone technology instead within the show. And from what I've heard, this new show will be much more befitting of Epcot's nighttime legacy. Then sticking with Epcot. By late 2023, we will at long last see the massive construction zone that has plagued the center of the park since 2019 finally go away for good, with the completion and opening of the all-new World Celebration neighborhood alongside the Journey of Water experience in world nature as well. And this World Celebration area will become the new heart of all of Epcot's international festivals throughout the year with Communicore Hall and Communicore Plaza serving as a multifaceted festival building capable of hosting art exhibitions, culinary demonstrations, and live musical performances inside and out, as the Communicore Plaza will have a double-sided stage setup for intimate performances and large-scale concerts. Then, throughout the rest of the Celebration neighborhood, there will be several different gardens connected through dynamic lighting to the five-ring Epcot Legacy logo, which will be just beyond Dreamer's Point, where a new statue of Walt Disney will overlook Epcot. Then, in terms of Journey of Water, inspired by Moana, This will be a walkthrough experience consisting of interactive fountains, waterfalls and water features of all kinds, which will teach guests about the importance of water conservation through the story of Moana. 
and potentially there may be a space for a Moana meet and greet as well. And speaking of character interactions, not only will we see the return of a custom built Mickey and Friends greeting area inside of Communicore Hall, but also Figment is scheduled to return as a meet and greet character in late 2023 with this supposedly to take place over in the Magic Eye Theatre as part of the Imagination Pavilion. And then as we move into the final few months of 2023, Disney's not just going to be looking to the past, but it's also going to be looking toward its future. As the weekend-long Destination D23 event will take place at Walt Disney World's Contemporary Resort. However, this will happen two months earlier than normal, as it swapped out its November schedule for September 8th to the 10th instead. As despite this being used in the past as the smaller sibling event to D23 Expo, considering the incredibly lackluster Disney Parks presentation at D23 Expo in 2022, potentially Disney might be looking to use Destination D23 to officially confirm a few Walt Disney World projects that they should have done at D23 Expo, like the Blue Sky expansion at Animal Kingdom, as if Disney doesn't announce something by late 2023, waiting until the D23 Expo in 2024 to confirm these expansions will give Universal a massive competitive advantage with Epic Universe opening in 2025. But then we arrive at arguably the biggest day in the year for Disney, or for that matter, the biggest day that Disney's had in quite a long time. As on October 16th, 2023, the Walt Disney Company will officially mark its centenary, as this will be exactly 100 years to the day since the company was initially founded as the Disney Brothers Studio in 1923. And in all honesty, I just hope that Disney has some big plans for this exact day to celebrate the 100th anniversary of a company that has undeniably changed the entertainment industry forever. And let's hope that they do this by never forgetting that it was all started not by a mouse, but by two brothers, Walt and Roy O. Disney. And whilst we're talking about Disney 100, that brings us to November 22nd, as Walt Disney Animation Studios will pay tribute to 100 years of wonder with the release of an animated movie with a unique blend of 3D animation and 2D hand-drawn animation in honor of the company's illustrious animation history, which will be officially titled Disney Wish, and this will focus on the origin of the iconic wishing star that has been featured throughout so many Disney movies over the past century. From Pinocchio to Peter Pan to Princess and the Frog, and even to the Disney movie intro itself, and it seeks to answer the question of how did the star that characters wish upon come into existence. And so that's it, that's everything that we can expect from Disney in 2023 in terms of the Disney parks and movies, and of course there'll be tons of news, announcements, and surprises along the way that we can't possibly predict here. So be sure to subscribe down below to DSY Newscast for the latest Disney news explained. Now, at the beginning of this video, you heard me say this video is sponsored by Squarespace. And in actual fact, this is a full circle moment for not only me, but also this channel. As you might be aware of this by now, but Squarespace actually played a critical role in what led to the creation of this channel. As before there was DSY Newscast, the YouTube channel, I used to operate a free Disney news app called DSNY Digest for over two years. And all of the content side of things was hosted on and powered by Squarespace's incredible blogging platform. And since then, Squarespace has continued to innovate. With Squarespace extensions, social profile integration, and new ways to connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated members-only content. That also enable the management of memberships, email communications, and leveraging of audience insights, all on one easy-to-use platform. So go to squarespace.com for a free trial today, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash DSNY newscast to then save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. But now it's over to you, Walton is. I would like to know what are you most excited to see from Disney in 2023 and the reason why. And if you've enjoyed this video for today, then give this video a massive thumbs up, subscribe down below and check out the rest of the videos on the channel as well. And with all of that being said, I've been Jack, you've been you, and I'll see you real soon. Thank <laughs> you.